Buenos dias, amigos. Good morning, fishing freaks. How we doing? Back at it again with LFD, baby. <laughs> Coming off a strong trip of catching over 100 bass. I think we caught about 120 on the last video. So, time to get that chesty on, y'all. Let's and, go get them. Uh, let's go get them. Dad's really pumped up. That's right. Super excited. This might be the day. This is it. Just might be. That's it right there. Whoo. Oh, righty then. I'm gonna start out with that just scrumptious top water. This is always the most exciting time fishing. Early morning. The beautiful mountains. Taste the excellence. Yeah. Oh, you got me hung up. I don't think you're still on here. Nope, you go. Here you go. I think I'm gonna switch up. <sighs> Tells me something though. First one of the day. Coming on the plastic. Sounds like a parrot there, a macaw. Wugga. What was it? Wugga. Wugga? Yeah, man. Maybe, no. No macaw? Wugga man? Wugga man. Wugga man? That's a macaw. That one had it a little bit deeper. I think these fish are real close to the bank right here, these little ones. It's not really what we're going for, but hey. All right, we're gonna switch it up right here. Fishing like straight rock ledge. Oh, there's one. Oh man, we can took it. So I'm under the impression here that these fish are liking to spawn on these ledges. They got their backs protected and it's they just feel safe. I think he's got it. That's gotta be a spawn fish. Just picking it up. I'm just trying to take this one ounce jig and just work it down like a stair step. Dad's taking a crankbait. He's trying to parallel the bank. You'll have it up on there on that ledge and then when you bring it off the side, starts falling, they'll bite it on the fall. So you kind of have to pay attention to your line. So they may pick it up while the jig's falling. You won't even feel it. Oh, he came off. That was a big one. It's about an eight pounder. Huh? That's a grande, you see? Ocho. I actually got to see that one. See net, good one. There were two more with it. Ah, oh, bien. There was two that may have been bigger than Yeah, I think so. It's a nice fish. Six pounder, two more with it. Oh man. See? See. Mira de dos pescados. Nice fish right there. Jig fishing. Just kind of running up the river we were running up here and I said uh, hey let's stop right here I like this wind we haven't had wind all day just flipped into a bush two more with it wind is a big deal out here since there was two more with that fish there's got to be some more bass in here in these trees that's really key that depth that angle you know we're sitting in 34 right here they like that steep little drop off i had that one really big one this morning i think it was you know eight plus just on a straight up ledge it was next to a tree this is more just fishing windy bank get another one. Oh, yeah it got me hung up though
nope, little one. It's right where you're supposed to be though. Come on, big in. You're even biting my favorite thing here. This is a watermelon candy jig right here, guys. I'm putting a chartreuse pepper rage crawl on there. That seems to be the deal. That's what everybody talks about down here. It kind of resembles a tilapia, I guess, but they really like that chartreuse. It really just looks like I'm, I'm throwing to the bank here, guys. Let me just kind of explain. I always do a terrible job of this. I'm really having to focus doing this trolling motor and concentrate where my jig's at. Boat control on this aluminum boat is pretty tough in this wind, but I want to try to do a better job of explaining things to you guys. So what we're doing here is I'm throwing this jig. I can't really cast it too far. I'm just throwing it about, you know, 20 to 25 feet in front of the boat and I'm working it through the trees. I'm bouncing it through the trees. You know, uh, one of the guys here at the lodge asked me last night, he said, how do you, how do you work that jig? What do you do with it? He was saltwater fisherman, never fished it before. And there's really no need to sit there and really bob it up and down in the tree. You're pretty much just gonna get bit as soon as it gets down there. And I just like to bump it like once or twice, make contact with the cover and then keep moving. Like in this situation, I've got trees sticking out of the water. So I'm gonna throw it directly in there. I want it to fall on a slack line. So it goes directly down the tree base, bump it a couple times and then reel it in. But there's a lot of trees I can't see. So in that case, I just toss it out there and I'm dragging it over it. I try to get it to the top, pause, let my rod tip drop, and let the jig fall right in the middle, bounce it a couple times, and then move until I feel the next tree. And I could do that with braid. The 65 pound braid, I can feel everything. So this is a heavy, heavy combo, so I'm working it with two hands so I don't wear out my wrists. But we had a good thing going right there with the wind, and then the wind just flattened out. So we're gonna move on up the river and see if we can catch some more fish. I like the brush around the bank areas with that steep slope and just that wind, man. As soon as that wind died, done. Little guy out here deeper, nuts. Not where he's supposed to be. Come on now. Let's go right here. Let's go right here. See? Trees. There's a big fish here. I smell him. Oh, there's a big one. There's a big one. Yep. 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 Uh, he's not as big as I thought. Oh, God dang it. Oh, well. See? Te gusta. Yes, it was throwing the old disco colored uh, swimmer here. We just, on the way in, I was looking and I was like, you know what, that just freaking looks good. Let's stop there. Wind's blowing on it hard. Just said, I gotta get me some of that. I could smell a big one, literally. I just got really hammered right there. There 
There's a little better one. Yeah. There we go. I got it. There we go. A little better fish. Grabbed it when it got in there. This is a four-aught hook right here. Actually, I think it's a five quarter ounce weight. These things work really good in grass lakes. It's so clear for these spinner baits, and although I think spinner bait work good right here just because of the the mud line that we've stirred up or the wind stirred up but this little deal just looks tremendous in the water oh yeah oh that's a good one skinny oh my gosh <laughs> muy fuerte muy fuerte si sí. See, big old head on it. Skinny, flaco. Nice fish. See, 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 ocho is, is gordo. See, see, he said it'd be an eight pounder if it wasn't skinny. Instead, it's like six, but boom, nice fish. Alrighty guys, we have managed to put together a few toads here, trying to go after that big one. And what I know is, you know, a lot of these fish are in that 10 plus, 12 plus foot zone. You know, these windy banks are good. They're a huge pain in the butt to fish. Water's clear, you know, anytime you got clear water, the wind is gonna help you. Same thing with cloud cover. And right now we've just kind of got like a haze. Good. Good shot. I got one out of the top. Should be a big one down on the bottom. And the sun sets these mountains. This amazingness. Pretty cool. I don't know if you guys can see it all the way out there. It's a really cool place to fish. It is time to take it into La Casa. We're gonna go grab some nachos and uh, we're gonna give some thoughts about the end of the day here, the whole day, really. Tassy looking area. <laughs> All righty, fish breaks. Today was really a tough fishing day. It was like very calm in the middle of the day. Um, there was a big lag and then the wind started picking up in the afternoon and that definitely helped. The thing that kind of set the tone for me was having that really, really big fish, losing that big fish early. And I was thinking, man, that right there, I'll be able to get a big bite. And then it just got super calm. Now I could fish that in the wind, you know, going up to some of those trees. If I found a good tree, I would just kind of bop it. Um, and the ledges as well, that's where those fish are holding. But man, I gotta tell you what, this thing kicked it on this afternoon and I'm definitely gonna be building off of this later so I really wanted to show you this. Throwing this on a seven and a half, or actually seven four medium heavy, big sexy and this is a uh, this is a flashy swimmer, owner of flashy swimmer right here, 25 pound test uh, sunline shooter, really good fluorocarbon on there and that, that's just a little swim bait, I think that's a skinny dipper. That seemed to be really good where I would throw a spinner bait since the water's so clear right now, I'm throwing this and I hope this helps you guys because this this right here is a great alternative to throwing a spinner bait in really clear water. I noticed some small bait fish swimming uh, kind of close to the surface that were about that long, uh, had the very similar profile. And this right here, I was getting small fish when I was fishing it up shallow, but when I'd let it slow roll down there a little bit deeper, 
that's where I got those bigger fish. So I'm definitely gonna be throwing this a lot more tomorrow. That was basically it. That was the pattern. It is now time to sign off, fishing freaks. Thank you for being here today, and I certainly hope you learned something. And stay tuned because we still gotta get Dad, get Dad, that big one. I think I'm gonna let him have a lot more spots. I'm just really trying to help him out this afternoon and, and uh, let him have some areas and kind of sh you know figure out some things. Uh, really help him out because I want him to catch that big bass. You know, I want to catch one, but I really want my dad to catch his PB and catch a big one on a fly. So stay tuned for more action. See you on the next one.